Uh, okay, so I guess we can we can begin. So thank you everyone for joining for the first day of the workshop on uh, modern techniques in Romanian geometry, uh, joined with the colloquium on geometry of the University of Yucatan. And it is such a very big uh, pleasure for me to, to have Professor Marcos Alexandrino uh, from the uh, University of Sao Paulo, uh, who's going to give us a, a course in holonomy and singular Romanian foliations. Thank you very much, Professor, for accepting our invitation. Please go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, first, I would like to thank the organizers, especially Jesus, that was very patient with me with all my questions. I'm very happy to be able to participate of this workshop in that celebrate Oscar's birthday. Oscar was with visiting USP a few times, and he always caused the big impact with the excellent lecturers interacting with us. So it's really a pleasure and well, congratulations, Oscar. So um, our goal, as I was talking with Jesus, is try to give uh, three lectures about this topic. And in this way, I would like to say, approach a little the students and uh, as well as the research. So our talk will be divided in three lectures. Let me see if it is working here. So in the first lectures, I will say a few words about geometric control theory and the singular Riemannian foliations, stressing always examples about uh, isometric actions. In the second lecture, I should uh, present what is called the Lonome foliation, and uh, briefly review the ideas behind the Ambrose Singer theorem. So this lecture and this lecture should contain information also for the students. Here in the first lectures today, we should approach Sussman theorem. And finally, in the last lecture, I will present some local models of singular Riemannian foliations and uh, explain, or at least say a little, how it can be used if, to understand more mean curvature flows and uh, a few problems that we are working on with Leonardo and Marcelo about calculus of variations, Yamabe problem and other things like that. So let us then start. Uh, Jesus, please, please, please make me a big favor. Uh, if people have some questions, they can just write in chat and you can give to me maybe. Yes, of course. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just, a, it, yes, it, it's an attempt, but please, please uh, be free to ask things whenever you want. Especially, I have no idea what you're talking about. Your English is terrible. So you, you can also say this, that. So let's start today with a few words about the geometric control theory and the singular Riemannian foliations. I will base my lecture on, the, on these three papers and a little in the, on this nice book of Agrashev and the Shakov and classical citations. So in order to motivate uh, how, uh, in order to explain how natural orbits and the, therefore singular foliations appear in mass and the engineers and other areas, I would like to start with um, a, a nice example, a small history about uh, train and how to travel from one station to the other, okay? So let's start with the definition. Given a manifold, a collection of vector fields everywhere defined will be called a geometric control system. Where everywhere defined means that the union of the domains of the elements of the set is M. For several applications, you may think on this guy as a complete vector field, but there will be situations where we do have to assume that domain is not everything. Usually, U 
can have additional properties, manifold with corners, with border, enumerate sets, simplex, etc. So let us start with this nice um, history about a train. Assume that you have a train, I put the unit, the mass of the train one in a straight line. And assume that you can, uh, your acceleration lies between minus one and one. So by Newton equation, we learn it in high school or at the very beginning of, uh, of university, you can describe it with this nice uh, second order ordinary differential equation. So it is in the line, so you can transform this ordinary second order differential, ordinary differential equation in a first order ordinary differential equation in R2, the space of a position and the velocity. So here is then our control, geometric control system, the set of vector fields where U lies between minus one. So it is U lies between min, minus one and one, okay? And, um, okay. And um, now the problem. We, the, the problem should be, we want to, to travel from the station minus A to and stop at station zero. Okay, I, I'm I'm originally from Rio, so it is not uh, completely clear in Rio if you take a bus, if you uh, stop with velocity zero, usually the bus don't do that. You have just to jump. But uh, for all problems, uh, the train really will stop with velocity zero here. So one possibility to solve this problem would be accelerate, would be accelerate, and uh, so uh, the maximum acceleration take u equal to one, and after uh, and then disaccelerate, okay, in the in a in a convenient t one time. So we would then consider an ordinary differential equation described by this blue vector field here, and at the right moment that we should uh, calculate we would consider another ordinary differential equation, this red one. Oh, yes. So, and uh, we would make here a choice that we'll call a control function. A control function will be just a function from R into our space U. And this control function should describe uh, our choices are we accelerating, disaccelerating in this in this way to travel? I choose this one. I will accelerate and in the right time I start to, to disaccelerate. So here is what happens. We can trivially solve this ordinary differential equation and this and calculate this intersection in this point. This is a very easy exercise. And um, it, and then we get that the time of a change is square root A, and the time that we reach the station zero is two square root H. So we started to, to increase in the velocity, and at this time, we started to decrease the velocity, okay? And the, the solution of our problem can also be seen as a continual curve, piecewise smooth, uh, that fulfill this ordinary differential equation. This is a, a curious ordinary differential equation. This is a non-autonomic vector field. It depends on time. And, uh, and it has even a problem because uh, it may admit uh, discontinuity. If you see here, this vector point here and suddenly it points here. So we have to talk about auto, uh, non autonomous vector fields and that may have discontinuity. But with the right hypothesis, Cara Theodorus theorem, that in fact ex still exists a, piece, a piecewise smooth solution for this equation. And as we saw, the solution of our problem is a composition of flows. So 
if you want then to start from zero, to, from minus A to the station zero, we, we make this, this is an option. We accelerate, we increase velocity. At the right moment, we decrease. And this is in fact the solution to optimize the time of this problem. This can be proved to use Pontryag maximal principle and the Filipov theorem. So this is just a taste to what those people of uh, geometric control theory do. They may have, they have several other interesting problems. They may be interesting to optimize, for example, uh, cinetic energy. They may be interesting to minimize the costs of your travel. So maybe you have to travel slower, but you, you can pay less. So there are several problems of optimizations and they always started usually trying to apply Pontryag maximal principle. We will not do that. Hopefully I will give a talk in by year, February, talking about the things that I'm learning nowadays. But I, I start with this nice problem in, just to illustrate how natural is to consider uh, the composition of the flows. Compositions of flows is the start point when we are trying to model several things from engineers to economic science, okay? Fed, the, the Federal Bank Reserve, the Federal Bank in America use a, a control system changing variables, for example. So, with this motivation in mind, we finally can start our thing, that is to define what an opt is. Given a geometric control system, uh, everywhere defined, this will be always the hypothesis, we call an orbit through a point Q, all possible compositions of the flow with all possible times. Here probably I should write since maybe they are not complete EI. Okay. So this is an orbit. I like to think an orbit as if you are in a situation Q0, then it contains the all possibilities where you can go from there, what you can do but it also, also contain, allow you to open a history book and ask yourself where I came from. And if in the past I made different choices, where I could be. So orbit space, an orbit contain all this kind of informations. Well, engineers and, econ and in economic sciences, sometimes they are quite pragmatical forget about the past, I'm just interested in what I can do now. So they also have the concept of attainable set, that is the compositions of all possible flows, but now the time must be non-negative. We will be mainly interested in this concept of orbit, but I will probably say a few words about attainable set as well. Uh, Jesus, so far so good? Yeah, so maybe I had a question just to make sure I'm I'm fully understanding. Okay. So, so these these flows uh, they generally do not commute, right? So they so generally are not commute. They generally right. are not okay. commute. Right. Okay. And okay. Uh, there is uh, several nice results when they commute, but they usually don't commute. Okay. Um, so therefore, all possible combinations, not the choice of vector itself, but all possible combinations. Right. So, and why? Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. So, why are we talking about orbits? Because they are the central idea of foliations, of what we call singular foliations, a partition of a manifold M into immersed submanifolds is called a singular foliation if every vector VP tangents to one of those manifolds that from now on I will call a leaf, there exists a vector field X with the following properties. The support is in a neighborhood of you. Uh, it coincides with the VP and it is tangent to the leaves in this neighborhood. 
This is a concept I will always talk in just about uh, differential smooth things. But as you see, this is also a definition that we can apply for analytic foliations. I have done that with the Michelangelo there in Murcia, for example. So what is the re relation with the singular foliations, the main topic of this, this lectures, and the orbits? Well, it is related through the Stefan Sussman theorem that say the following. Assume that you have a geometric control uh, system, that means a set of vector fields everywhere defined, then the orbits is a partition that is in fact smooth, it is in fact a singular foliation. So every time you have a, a, a geometric control system, you have a singular foliation. And in particular, a singular foliation is a generalization of what we call regular foliation. A regular foliation is a partition where all the leaves has the same leaves and the um, that satisfy also this property. The only difference is in a regular case, we can also describe it as a partition that locally can be described by a submersion, but uh, it, this is equivalent. Okay. So once we have this definition, let us keep always an example in mind. And this example comes from actions of a Lie group. So, here I will consider a Lie group G and a manifold M. If you don't know exactly what a Lie group is, you can think about M as a Riemannian manifold, uh, embedded submanifold with induced metric. G can you can think about G as a closed group of isometries of M. So then you have an example. And uh, consider then G a Lie group, M a manifold, then a smooth action is just a map that fulfills these two properties. The identity element induces a diffeomorphism, that is the identity, and the composition of the diffeomorphism comes from the product of G2 and the G1. Every time when you have an action, a smooth action, you also have vector fields. You also have, uh, uh, especially in this case, you all, always have a geometric control system that is constructed in this way. You take a one parameter group, multiply by B and derive. And in this way, you have a vector, a vector in P. So, and then the optics coincide with the concept of orbs that uh, Riemannian geometers like uh, Jesus and I are uh, working with. And if it, this still sounds strange for you, I can even give you a very concrete example. I can consider SO3 here, M as R3, action as just multiplication of a matrix. So we have here a matrix, we have here a vector. We can multiply matrix but with vectors. And then in this case, the orbs are spheres. Apart from the zero, 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 when the point is zero, 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 then you have a fixed point. And if you fix uh, axis C, then you can ask about, um, about this, uh, you can ask about this one parameter group here, where this is the exponential of a matrix. And uh, what AX is this matrix here, C1 minus C2, C3. Okay, let's just do that again. Zero, 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 C1 minus C2, C3 minus C3, C2 minus C1. And then in this case, you have here uh, this one parameter group. This induces a curve, and the vector field is the derivative of this guy, is just the AXC product P 
that is the vector product of Xi with P. So we have here then our rotations around Xi with the angular velocity equal to the norm of Xi. And this is the guy that we started to meet in almost, uh, at least in phys the first class of the physics at the university, we started to see this guy. So this is a good example to have in mind of a geometric control system. And this is the kind of examples that we will do today. Tomorrow we'll deal with another class of examples, but today to, to make everything more concrete as possible, let us keep this example in mind. So we will be mainly concerned with the concept of opts and the singular foliations, but I may say a few words about attainable set. Under very, very nice conditions, for example, if your control system, geometric control system is analytic and M is analytic, then although the attainable set may be something complicated, you can still say something about it. You, you can have then the interior of this attainable set is dense in the attainable set that is contained in the opt. I choose an example to illustrate an attainable set. I take here two vectors, just two vectors, one and a half, minus one and a half. I have just two, two vectors in our system. I can travel along the integral curve of the first, then I can change using the second, then I return to the first, then I can change to the second, and then I can make this, this pass here. And in this cone, this cone contains all possible places that, that I can achieve it using just the, those two vector fields. This is a nice example where the attainable set is not equal to the orbit of Q that in this example is R2. Why I choose this example because it is described what we call in Riemannian foliations the dual leaf. This is actually a dual leaf of a Finsler submersion, a topic that Michelangelo, uh, Benigno, and I studied very often. And it is in this paper with Fernando and Marcelo. Uh, for more information on how you can travel, traveling along broken geodesks of homogeneous Finsler foliations, informations about orbits of singular Finsler foliations, etc. you can see this paper. But this is just to illustrate that even in geometry, it happens that we have to deal with sometimes with vector fields that uh, with a system that is not symmetric. Okay, given this vector, you don't have the minus this vector. And that is why the attainable set, what you usually call dual leaf, is a different of the opt, okay? So just to, to, to know, Jesus, we do have a scenes that related with the Wilkins results about dual foliations there. So let us then continue. And we can now go to the proof of the stefan sussman theorem. So what is the main idea? The main idea is to present a candidate of a sing possible singular uh, distribution. And this guy here is, will be the candidate, is the candidate to be the tangent space of the odds. I will use here possible strange notations, but very useful one. So I have to say a few words about that. Mass called P will be group, the group generated by the flow C. I will give here a, a proof in the case where your vector fields are complete. I, I'm trying to avoid words like pseudo group, etc. in this talk. So you may think, okay, our vector field is complete. I can compose everything. I don't have problems in composing the source of one with the target of other. Uh, in calculus, uh, advanced calculus, we have seen that vector fields can 
uh, can be seen as an operator. You use a vector field to derive functions. This may be a linear derivative. So this is relatively common, this notation in advanced calculus differential geometry. But what starts to be a little annoying, at least for Leonardo, was that we start to consider points as, as an operator itself. So points operated in vector fields, differ operated in functions like this. And with this strange idea that the, we're not interested in point, but in the functions in our space, the observer of, a tra of mechanical system, that is a mechanical system, uh, we are F are our observers there, we are not in quantum mechanics, they commute, functions commute. With this nice notation, we can write the adjoint operator just like that. And that is one of the several reasons why this kind of notation is nice. Maybe I have to, I should recall for the students what this guy is. This guy induces an isomorphism between vector fields of M into M. Okay. The idea here is assume that you have, uh, oh, uh, now I can, okay, now let's start here. So you assume that you have a diffeomorphism phi, a vector field X, a vector field X. Here I make a little like that. And uh, then we will do the following. We make this a W, the adjoint of a phi. Phi is this guy here of x, and this is just uh, take the derivative of a phi minus eins x composed with phi. That means we have, um, if you want to calculate this new vector field here, that will be our w at p. What we do, we go here to this point, the phi the P point, we go here to this point, evaluate the vector field here and push back by phi. So this is a nice way to induce vector fields from one manifold to the other manifolds when they are at the okay? And the advantage of this op these operators appears in our lectures, for example, when we consider the, when you consider the adjoint of the, of A T epsilon X, when our D field is in fact a flow, and when we derive this guy, just like Lie groups, we get here, the Lick lemma of epsilon x. So this, we this is a way to push vector fields and induce other vector fields. For example, we have the vector field x, and then we have constructed the new vector field the w. And I like to see these like a, it's a kind of generalizations of uh, of rotate something, deforming something, create a new vector fields. Okay, if the flows com commute. Uh, you just get X, but usually the flows don't commute. And so far, so good. Students have questions, maybe, I don't know. Everything is okay? So far, so ah, that is Leo complaining. <laughs> I saw, I saw. Yes, 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 Leo. We always have it written everything in the wrong way. Yes, yes. Finally, my revenge, because I'm, how you say that, uh, Link's hand, uh, I use the left. So that is my payback. So in this, at least in this proof, I use this strange notation. So now that uh, I establish what this notation is, let me put the first claim that may already give an intuition why this should be the candidate. 
uh, if I have here our this uh, this distribution, the singular distribution at point Q zero, and uh, and then we have this distribution here, P Q, where Q is okay revenge time. This guy. Then this uh, diffeomorphism of phi zero send one to the other. So, and this is certainly a property that uh, we want. If you think about opts of an action of a Lie group, certainly the tangent space should be invariant by that action. So, um, as I said during this talk, this lecture, we always think about okay, an example of a geometric control system, uh, uh, infinitesimal actions. Orbits are orbits. And so if you keep this in mind, this provides you a very nice intuition. So in action, in fact, uh, the tangent space is G invariant. So what are we trying to do here is to imitate this property. And uh, with this definition, we, we can prove this claim. That is, for example, a good motivation why this guy is in fact a candidate. So let us prove the claim and try to illustrate why this strange notation is useful. So we have an element of this guy here. This is an element of this guy. And we apply the diffeomorphism phi zero to this guy. So we just open what the adjoint is. It's just a conjugation with this notation. And now you use what you usually do when you have actions, we put, we add and subtract, we put and erase, we put phi zero here and erase phi zero. So matter and antimatter here. And now this guy here is Q. And this entire guy here is the adjoint. So it's very clear that then that the diffeomorphism send this singular distribution to this singular distribution, okay? And that is the motivation why this guy is a, a, con a natural candidate. Tangent space of orbits do that. And now we will try to construct a local description of uh, an orbit or to, of will be an orbit. We will try to construct an embedding map such that the image of this embed, embedding map is contained in the orbit. This guy will be called the plaque. So let us see how you do that. For example, in dimension two, I assume that you just have two vectors, v1 and uh, v2. And we start here in your point q0 or q. And what you do then, you start then to navigate with V1. You take the flow of V1, apply it with this strange annotation like that. And uh, after that, you can, you can uh, compose with these vectors, okay? And when you do that, if everything is right, you could then create, at least in a very small domain, a surface. That is the idea how we intended to construct this embedding map. We take a set of vector fields. Each of, each of these vector fields has this form is adjoint P of C. Note, our candidate is the span of those guys. It's generated by those guys. But here, I, those vectors must be, must be equal to this guy, okay? So, and uh, we define this as, and we choose those vector fields to be a basis of our singular distribution at point Q0. And then we define this map as a generalization of what I have just explained, we 
we travel with the first vector, then we travel with the second, then you are in three dimension, we travel with the third, et cetera, et cetera. And it's a very intuitive idea after all, you, you have used that in high school, X and Y to try to identify points with X and Y. The difference is now that those vector fields don't commute. And this choice is very important, is part of the definition of this embedding map. How we can prove that this guy is an embedding map as we just derive GQ at time at T equals zero, zero, zero and see that this guy is invertible, uh, see that this guy is immersed, and then we re uh, restricting the neighborhood, we have an embedding map. So this is uh, how we construct our candidate to be a plague that is roughly speaking, a small neighborhood of our orbit. Now we go to claim three that say, okay, this map depends on several things. First, the choice of vectors. Second, because they don't need to commute, how, uh, how you compose them. So this depends from a lot of things. But the tangent space of this, this, this submanifold, the tangent space of the submanifold does not. The tangent space of this submanifold should coincide with this intrinsic object that is our singular distribution that was defined here at the beginning. Okay. So how we can prove that we just derive as we have done in, Fro in Frobenius proof. When you prove Frobenius theorem, we kind of do the same thing. We are improving the Frobenius theorem. It's just like that. So we, we apply, we fixed every time. We want, we want to understand what this map do with the vector field, the canonical vector field A1. This guy here, zero, zero, blah, blah, blah. One, zero, zero, blah, blah, blah. This A1. What you usually do, we fix, we fix every time T1 to T i minus one. And after that, and we can, and we just change this guy. So this is essentially kind of a partial derivative of this guy, okay? And, but you have a flow. So since you have a flow, you can decompose this guy. And this guy is too big. So let us give a name for, for this part. So I will call this entire guy here, phi. Call this entire guy here, phi. I open this flow, okay? So, and I just uh, interesting to calculate this partial derivative. So now that we, we have done that, I can again put and add and subtract, put and erase the same thing. I put phi here and I and I del delete phi minus here. And now that we have done that, this entire guy, a, bu a bullet phi is just your map GP. This guy here is here. So, so we just prove that every vector like that, that is the basis of this tangent space is a guy like this. So the, the basis of this tangent space, this partial derivative here are contained in the singular uh, distribution, but uh, the singular distribution has dimension M so those both spaces coincide. As you see, the proof is quite clear and, and using these notations of a bullet, we can actually just do that quite algebraic. And now the last step of our proof, okay, uh, we, will, we want to glue plates. 
Okay, so let us start. I put some color here. Oh no, I can use a, finally the Brazilian flag, finally. Four years we, we are, were not allowed to use this, but consider I have a plaque here and uh, a plaque here. I want to avoid this kind of situations. This kind of situations is a no. I don't want this kind of situations. If I have a plaque, a green plaque and a yellow plaque and they intersect at some point, you had this situation should not happen. Instead, I want the following. I want to use, I want this plaque and I have here a point, uh, wow, wow, blue, point blue here that I call key hat. And then I have here this plaque, the yellow plaque. And I want to find a blue plaque here, here, this blue plaque, that should be contained at the same time in the green and the yellow and should be an open set of the green and the yellow. That is the final step. We construct the plaques, the sub-manifold that should be our orbs, at least locally, and now you want to glue them. And how you can do that? Well, we use a elementary fact about, um, about um, partial, uh, ordinary differential equations. See, we have, um, I, I call it that uh, green, yellow. So I will just prove that the blue one is contained in the green. And uh, the fact that the blue is contained in yellow is the same argument. So I have here the blue, the green plaque. I have uh, vector fields V. I should call that, uh, I have this vector field is, uh, V hat, so I have vector fields V hat, because those guys, just to remember those guys were constructed how? Those guys were constructed, take a point that lies in these intersections and uh, compose with the vectors that uh, has the form of uh, adjoint Phi, um, adjoint phi, your control. So those guys, let me put here, they belong to a guy like joint phi, your original control. Phi is a diffel, X belong to your control. And, and phi is one of the flows of your control system. So you have vector fields all around your point, uh, your point key hat. You have vector fields all around of your point key hat, but uh, we know that they are tangents to P uh, due to the how you choose those vectors. Those vectors should have this form, and P is spanned by this kind of vector field. So v hat is tangent to big pi. And so they are always tangent to this big pi. Let me put this big pi here. They are tangent to big pi. Uh, but big pi, on the other hand, big pi is the tangent space is something intrinsical, but it's coincide with the tangent space of those plaques. So when we consider the foot point of the blue vectors, the foot point when you are working with the foot points, I can probably erase this guy. When you consider the foot point when X below to the, to the when x below, sorry, when x below to the plaque green, 
what happens when x below to the plaque green, then this vector below to the distribution big pi, but this coincides with the tangent space of the plaque, the green plaque. So we have then vector fields that when we restricted this vector field to the submanifold, they are a tangent to this submanifold. Therefore, the integral lines, therefore, this imply, so this is what we have. Therefore, the, the flow, the flow, the flow is contained is contained in the plague. Okay. And that is the main idea of the proof. Guys, questions. Jesus, Leo, that uh, is an old friend and know me very well to say, oh, Marcus, it was terrible. How you are? How are you? I think we are so far so good. Any so far so good. Oh. oh, so far so good is good. Yeah, I and think we're... so that was good. So that was the proof. So in order to prove that, um, in order to prove that a partition of orbits into the partition of orbits in, is in fact a, a smooth singular foliation. That is, you can extend a vector tangents to a leaf so that they are tangents to a leaf. We kind of imitate the Frobenius theorem. And uh, the picture that we should keep in mind is always actions. This will help a lot. And I can even review a little the proof. We start, uh, just to be sure, for students, we start with. Um, natural candidate, a singular candidate, this big pi. We check that the big pi is phi invariant as the tangent space of opts usually are. Then, and that is one of several reasons why I have used the strange notations of a bullet. Also because it make everything that we know about the Lie groups at least the very beginning can be translated for vector fields. That is the so-called chronological calculation. So this really helps a lot. And uh, so we can see that uh, we have this property in claim one. We then have a natural way to construct plaques. And that means embedded submanifolds that should be opened, that should be contained in the art just by composing flows blue. Blue, blue flow then composed by red flow. Uh, then we check again, but just algebraic, we check the tangent space of the plaque is contained in the plaque, but because they have the same dimension, they coincide. And finally, we glue plaques. We prove that the uh, yellow plaque and the green cannot have this form. They really should uh, glue. And the main idea is just to use the fact that if a vector field, uh, if you restrict a vector field in a neighborhood of a manifold, and uh, when we restrict it to a submanifold, so that though this restriction is tangent to the submanifolds, then the integral line is contained there. So that is just uh, the proof of claim for. So now in my last 10 minutes, I would like to start with the geometry. We spend uh, the first lecture talking about singular foliations, try to give a motivations and even generalize Frobenius theorem. So la let us start then talk about the geometry. So consider a singular foliation on a complete Riemannian manifold. This singular foliation on a complete Riemannian manifold will be called a singular Riemannian foliation. SRF for short, if each geodesk, if each geodesk 
that starts orthogonal to a leaf. If we start with the geodesk orthogonal to a leaf, orthogonal to a leaf, then the geodesk will be always orthogonal to a leaf in the future and in the past. Okay, so we have this. If you start orthogonal, then the geodesk must be orthogonal to all leaves it meets. This also means that locally the leaves are equidistant. Okay, and again, an example partition of M into orbits of an isometric action, then the, pa then the partition into the orbits is a singular Riemannian foliation. Um, there is infinitely many examples of non-homogeneous singular foliations. We will see tomorrow uh, a very natural example that uh, appears in every Riemannian geometry course, the Olonomy foliation. Every time when you have a vector bundle with a, a connection compatible with the metric, you have an, uh, an Olonomy foliation. So this, we will see this tomorrow. We have also this very, very, very nice uh, construction of uh, Professor Marco Radesk using Clifford system. Uh, they just take, he just take observers and take the pre-image of expected values of observers. So he actually generalized the hop vibrations. It's a, uh, and this, it's a class of, uh, of uh, singular Riemannian foliations already in Euclidean space. But unfortunately, we will not be able to discuss much of this. Today, we'll keep in mind in opts of isometric actions. Tomorrow, we'll talk about vector bundles and the parallel transports, etc. But yes, we do have a lot of non-homogeneous examples. Now uh, let them fix a concept called a, a slice. A slice is just the normal space of uh, your normal bundle. And this guy here is the intersection of your foliation with the slice. So let me illustrate the concept of a slice for actions. For example, if you have a G, your Lie group is S1R. If M is again R3, but now we just put here, we can consider your action, the multiplication. Take a uh, element here, S and the T, an element here, Z and L, and then you make S product Z, T plus L. So what are the opts in, the, in this case? The opts are a cylinder. You can rotate by S1 in R2, and then you translate, rotate, and translate. Those are the opts. But if you start in zero, then you rotate zero. It stay fixed. And then you translate, and you have the axis of cylinder. So this is an example of uh, anisometric actions and therefore of a uh, singular Riemannian foliations. What a slice here? Slice, it is the exponential map, uh, the exponential of the normal bundle. So the slice here, slice here is just R2, zero. And you see in this example that uh, the slice, intersection with your foliation, with the cylinders and the point, provide a singular foliation contained in the slice. Here, we have the circles here. Okay, so we have in the slice, uh, you have those circles. So this is a very important tool in isometric actions, you can understand several things of isometric actions do the following. 
uh, considering uh, the slice, and then you can consider the. Uh, so this is the slice, but what you usually do in what you usually do in isometric actions, you may find that in my book with Renato, uh, you just take uh, the tangent space of the slice, and you have here the uh, isotropy representation. The isotropy representation take an element of the isotropy and just do that. In uh, what was an isotropy, an isotropy are uh, the elements of G that fix, that fix Q. The, in this simple example, that was just S1. S1 fix zero, and the S1 acts on the slice. So in isometric actions, we have this uh, interesting idea that we may have an action on a Riemannian manifold, but we consider the intersection of the opts with the slice, take the exponential map, and then we consider a representation. Well, the same idea holds for uh, for singular or for singular Riemannian foliations. This is already in the book of Molino. Given this infinite small foliation is in fact a singular Riemannian foliation in an Euclidean space, when we identify it, the slice with its tangent space and flat metric. Another result that is similar to the actions is that if you put all the orbs with the same dimension, you get what we call a stratum. So especially if you take a connect component of a stratum, this tends to be a manifold. So you can open my book of Renato, recall the definition of a stratification, but yes, we have this very nice idea that you can uh, you can put your opts in different groups, one according to dimensions, okay? And construct uh, stratifications. Uh, we have uh, also this nice property that, um, uh, happens with the actions, this also happens with foliations. So if you start here with a singular Riemannian foliation, uh, assume that L has trivial holonomy, just to help me with my explanation. Here, let it enter the endpoint map and assume that derivative, the derivative, the uh, derivative, then the derivative, then the derivative has constant rank and the image of the endpoint map is in a leaf. This has happened always with actions. If I am here I and I have here a horizontal, oops, what happens here? A horizontal geodesk uh, that goes to this point. There is a place here where all points here go to the same point through horizontal geodesks. So when you have isometric actions, your endpoint has constant rank. In the same way, if I start here in, with another geodesk and uh, there is a place here, this yellow guy here, where all those points, all those points, go to the same point here. Here I'm traveling along what I call an equivariant vector field. So uh, one leaf is always parallel to the other leaf when you fixed an equivariant vector field that in the language of foliation, it means it is basic. And then you take the exponential map. So you always send one leaf to the other and this map 
has constant rank. This was called the equivocal property. This name comes from Torbergson and Turn at the 19th. And then we have been developed this concept. It appears for hyperpolar foliations. And nowadays we just formulate like that. So in particular, it means that we can uh, reconstruct the entire foliations if we start with a principal leaf, a leaf without holonomy. So we have a, a leaf, then a principal leaf, then we can reconstruct all the foliations. So this is a result that is kind of global. They connect distant leaves, okay? The result, the first results of Molyneux are local, kind of local. And here we have a global result. Uh, I, in my last two minutes, I would like to, I do have two minutes, isn't it, Jesus? Yes, definitely. Uh, we started a couple of minutes late, so yes, of course. Okay, okay. Thank you. So, as I say, uh, we always have this example of groups, uh, isometry groups in mind, but isometry group don't need to be closed. So, as Jesus will talk about actions, torque actions. You may have their irrational flow in a torque action and induced an isometric action such that the opt is not closed. So, a um, question in this area was given a singular Riemannian foliation, consider the closure of each leaf. So, this is our leaf L. So, you can consider the closure of this leaf. This union is still a singular, a singular foliation, it's smooth, and, in, and a singular Riemannian foliation that was the so-called Molino conjecture. Why this kind of result is important? Uh, this is nice, nice, if we do analysis. Because when we are dealing with the functions that uh, are basic, functions that, that are constant to the leaf, it doesn't matter if you are working with this foliation or these foliations. For analysis, it's okay. But from the differential point of view, it's quite easier to work with the foliation, with the closed leaves, the, the leaf space is housed off, has a very nice structure. So it's quite more easy to work with this, but sometimes we have to deal with the foliations with the not closed leaves. And if you are doing analysis, what we hope to do in the last minutes in our third lecture, it will be comfortable to deal with the closed foliations. So this is, one of my personal motivations to understand this problem. And the idea behind here was to see that there, there is vector fields, the so-called the killing vector fields that describe how that are tangents to L, to the closure of L, and describe how this leaf closure. And you should see this guy, as kind of uh, a flow in a metric space. I say, sorry, I am here. Okay. And you should see this guy as a flow in metric space. So the idea of proof of Molyneux conjecture was study flows in a metric space and lift those flows. So, Marco Radesk and I proved the following results that I like for itself. Assume that you have a proper isometric action. Okay, it holds for a kind of generalized Lee foliations that I don't have time to explain. So I put in that way. Uh, assume that you have a flow in this metric space, a continuous flows of isometry, continuous flows of isometry in this in this metric space. Then you, these continuous flows of isometry in this metric space is the projection of a smooth flow above. So continuous flows of isometric space are um, projections of smooth flows above. I like this very much. That was actually the main idea behind the main tool 
behind the Molyneux proof conjecture. And what is behind that, that is kind of interesting, uh, is a partial differential equation. So we have to study parabolic differential equations in metric spaces and control a bootstrap argument uh, and uh, some conditions in Sobolev space, you use a kind of de-singularizations, blow-ups. So I end my talk just providing uh, intuition what a de-singularization is. Uh, in a particular case, there is several kinds of singularizations. I will not have time to talk about that, but to make a connection with Jesus' work, so or, or topics of studies. Okay, Jesus do a lot of other stuff, but just a let to make a advertisement here. So I assume that you have a compact manifold with the compact leaves, singular manifoliations. Then you can find another compact space. Uh, another compact manifold, M hat, with a now a regular foliation. So we start with the singular foliations and you produce a regular foliation. And you have a map that's from this compact manifold to this, that send leaves to leaves, and such that the distance between the leaves of the singular Riemannian foliations and the leaves of uh, the regular foliations, they are quite close. They are almost an epsilon isometry. They are, this is what we call, and when we restrict this to opt space, this is induced to what we usually call it an epsilon isometry. So this is implied that every lift space is always a limit of in Gromov house of sense of orbifolds. And this is a perfect epsilon isometry, epsilon isometry because it's not something discontinuous. It's actually smooth epsilon isometry from this guy to this guy. So sometimes to approximate this critical manifold by orbifolds can be very useful. And you use this kind of technique to use a partial, study partial differential equations that help to understand flows isometric flows or metric space that help us to understand the closures of foliations. And that is all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was my time. So Jesus, questions, uh, complaints, complaints. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Professor, for this beautiful first lecture. Uh, so I'd like to ask the audience if there are any questions for Professor uh, Alexandrina. So actually I have a very quick uh, and naive uh, question. Uh, <laughs> so if, if you look at the definition of uh, singular Riemannian foliation, it seems to me that it more or less makes sense uh, in very low regularity if you, are, if you are willing to replace like the tangent space, say for example, for the Gram of Hausdorff uh, tangent space and and so on, and so uh, how how little regularity can one actually like require if one uh, wants to do this type of theory? Like for example, in the generalized uh, Frobenius theorem, is it okay to assume only, for example, vector fields which are only C one alpha say or? Yes, that is true. If you are assuming. Since like C1, I guess several results work. Uh, mm -hmm. Several things that you, um, if you are using that, probably several results work. C2, certainly several results work. C1, I have to go very, very caref carefully with the proof, but probably C2 works everything almost the same. And... Uh, I, but that's a very profound question because Alexander Litschek, uh, uh, Ricardo Mendes, they usually think also about submetries. So one of the questions in the area actually is kind of uh, uh, generalizations of uh, Molyneux conjectures. Molyneux conjectures uh, was a 30 years old uh, conjectures. Uh, it, we didn't have a technology at that time to deal with this kind of questions. Uh, in fact, we have to 
to develop new tools to study this. But the more abstract questions and important question is assume that you have a partition that is just a local equidistant without any assumption of smoothness. Does already imply that the thing is smooth? That is uh, the general conjecture in the area. Uh, people believe that this is yes, but they still don't have any clue. Uh, in Molino conjectures, in one way or another, we do have used the, the smooth structure of the foliations to study the, the candidate of a smooth structure of the closure. But if you start with any, any structure, you cannot use these tools of geometric control theory projections in the slides. Recall that when you have actions, what we usually do, we project the, the opts to, into the slides. We project. The, that is the main idea of singular foliations, Riemannian, Lorentz. Oh, 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 oh. Let me stop with this. No, <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm vandalizing my own text. That means something. <laughs> so you, you have here this idea that you, you can project in a slice. That is actually another way to see a singular foliation. Uh, we have this alternative definition in the paper with Francisco Caramello. We just say a singular foliation, we have a submersion mm -hmm. such that uh, the the pre-image of the C0 coincide with the plaque. And for other points, it um, just contained in the plaque. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is another way to talk about smoothness. You, you replace the scenes project by a submersion. Right. So yeah. uh, in some sense, you probably would have start with the uh, auxiliary definition that says essentially the following, you, you, your partition admits a submetry that has this definition mm -hmm. and then continues to go on. I just think about that right now, but probably, probably uh, I have to talk with Alexander at some time soon. Uh, I have to visit Diego and Alexander and I should talk about that at some point. We sh probably should start with the submersion a metric submersion and say, okay, that you have this property and maybe then you can find the smooth structure. But the main idea is always this idea that starting calculus of a red fly flows. If you have a flow that is not different from zero, you use this idea of a point carré. You, you started to ask how they intersect a transverse submanifold. So mm -hmm. it, it's very strong, this idea that you, you may have to project things. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. But I don't know. That, that is an interesting open question how how you don't need the smoothness in this area. And right. the, for example, a uh, homotetic uh, lemma that say that you send a plaque to plaque. If you have uh, a singular Riemannian foliations and make a, a, a motetic transformation, you send plaques to plaque. This is, has nothing to do with the smoothness. This is just a metric property. It is, is quite well written in a paper of Michelangelo and Benigno and I, because Michelangelo is very, very, very careful. If Michelangelo accepts something, it's probably completely right. <laughs> it is unbelievable careful. I, I love Miguel for that, and I hate Miguel for that at the same time, but he's very, very, very careful. So we have to review every small detail in the area, and we have to write a better proof for Finsler case. And I don't know any proof in Romania case that is so well written as the proof mm -hmm. in the Finsler case due to Miguel. <laughs> Fortunately, okay. but yes, yes. So I don't know. Maybe it's true, but we we have no clue, not yet. But as uh, you see, uh, metric spaces convergence uh, appears naturally in this area. We have used it to control your your gromov hausdorff metric geometry mm -hmm. has been used to control blow ups and uh, dissimilarizations. And you can always say to your students, see, Marcos sent me this uh, sheet paper 
about computer and Gromov conversions. So let me get some money from the government. <laughs> right, yes. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Professor. I, I apologize, I don't have, a, we don't have too much time for any other questions, but definitely we can uh, forward them to Professor Alexandrino. And so thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joseph.